When I was in high school, I was lucky enough to go on a school service trip to Bolivia. Because we were in Bolivia and just on the cusp of the Amazon rainforest, we spent about a week in cabins, staying near the jungle and hiking and exploring this new biome that I had never experienced before. It was while I was there that I had the most life-altering experience up until that point. During our hike, we came across an area with about 10 spider monkeys. Spider monkeys are large New World primates with long limbs and a prehensile tail. This means that their tail acts as a fifth limb. I had of course been interested in monkeys as a child, but this was my first time seeing them in the wild. They were beautiful. These monkeys had been habituated, meaning they were used to humans and not afraid. Because of this, they came close to us to investigate, and I got an incredible close look at one monkey in particular. She was a mother with her baby clinging to her back. She was moving her baby around to stay comfortable, and I got a close glimpse of her hands. Primate hands are so interesting because they are just slightly different versions of our hands, as humans are also primates. But seeing her as a mother, seeing how similar her hands were to mine, made me realize that we are more similar to our primate relatives that I had previously understood. This made me totally infatuated with primates, and it was then that I realized that I wanted to be a scientist and I wanted to study primates. This type of scientist is called a primatologist, and I went for it. I went to college where I decided to double major in wildlife biology and anthropology. I was lucky enough to begin working in the Primate Behavior and Cognition Lab at the University of Georgia, where I met so many helpful and meaningful mentors that encouraged me and gave me opportunities to work on various projects that I wouldn't have otherwise had the opportunity to. For my senior thesis, I studied the gestural communication among juvenile western lowland gorillas at a nearby zoo, which was my first time collecting real data. I collected spatial data on their habitat and made an ethogram and recorded their behaviors. The easiest place to do this was from the public viewing area, as believe it or not, this is where the best view of the animals are. When I collected data, I had an iPad that I used to mark the behaviors and map where the animals were every five minutes. One day, when I was collecting this data, two little girls around six or seven years old came up to me and asked what I was doing. I told them that I was watching the gorillas so that I could study them. Their mom came over and asked them, what do you think her job is if she's studying the animals? And the little girls answered with so much excitement, in unison, a scientist. <laughs> and I told the girls that if they love animals, they can study them too when they grow up. The mom sincerely thanked me, and they continued on through the zoo. This made me so happy for multiple reasons. First, it was nice to actually be called a scientist when I felt like such an imposter trying to work on my project. Second, this mother was so incredibly encouraging of her daughters to follow their interests. This interaction stuck with me every time I was challenged and every time I didn't think I was good enough. I thought about these girls and how I can be a role model to so many more like them. After I finished undergrad, one of my graduate student friends invited me to come to Indonesia with her to collect data for a project she was doing. This gave me my first field experience by tracking macaques in the jungle of Indonesia. I learned so many things about field work and data collection, and behavioral studies, um, and especially how you're supposed to dress in the forest. There are mosquitoes everywhere, and also you're supposed to camouflage. <laughs> Soon after I got back from Indonesia, I began grad school at Texas A&M University, where I studied biological anthropology. Grad school is amazing, and the majority of my time there focused on researching and studying another type of primate called owl monkeys. For my master's thesis, I spent about six weeks in Peru studying the behavioral ecology of these owl monkeys. Owl monkeys are a small, nocturnal primate, which are very cryptic and difficult to spot. It was hard work, and I saw a lot of giant spiders, but I loved my time as a researcher and had an amazing time observing so many incredible primates and other animals. Because the monkeys were, or were nocturnal that I was studying, I was also nocturnal during my time in Peru. <laughs> I truly feel as though I had an amazing experience and lived my life to the fullest and did real science. In grad school, to earn money and to pay for my education, I was a teaching assistant and I fell in love with teaching. This guided my career in a new direction. 
I am now a high school biology teacher, which I absolutely love. I often think about those girls from the zoo, and I feel like I'm doing my part to continue to encourage young girls, as well as all of my students, to pursue science. I love the journey it took to get me here, and I love where I am now, but it was not without pushback. My closest friends and family were always supportive of my pursuit of primatology, but it was not always well received by others. I remember once in undergrad, I was talking to an older adult man who I had never met before, and he asked about what I studied and wanted, what I wanted to do after I graduated. I told him my story and how I was interested in becoming a primatologist, and he laughed at me. He asked me questions about what I would ever do with my degree and how I could ever be successful in science and was it too late for me to change my major. And unfortunately, this was not an uncommon conversation for me to have. Again, the people who mattered to me were always supportive, but so many friends of friends or acquaintances frequently challenged me and frequent discouragement can get hard to shake off. This is the main reason why I'm here and another reason why I'm currently a teacher. Children and young adults deserve the support to pursue their interests and make a difference in the world through scientific inquiry and experimentation. Science is not easy, and being a woman in science is not easy as well. I feel so lucky that in my job, I get to encourage young people that they can do science and they can make a difference with this as a career. Even if they don't end up doing something truly groundbreaking, um, it's still important that they follow their dreams and have a fulfilling life doing what they love. Let's stop discouraging kids from pursuing their interests and allow them to explore their own lives. If kids are passionate about something, let them pursue it and figure it out for themselves. They will end up where they need to be.